Hey guys, Fancy Animal here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove, inspect, and replace the tired spark plugs in your Ducati Panigale, or any motorcycle for that matter. So let's get started. Oh, you better be alert. I might just throw a random fry in the middle. Oh, who's faster? That was good. All right, so I'm in the middle of adjusting the valves here on my 2013 1199S Panigale. So actually, I just adjusted my valves. They're all set. And for those of you guys who have L-twin Panigales, you're curious what your spark plugs look like after uh, 31,000 miles. Here you go. Here's the original plug here. And uh, here's the new plug. And uh, let's take it onto the light and see what it looks like. Okay, so if we look at this plug here, we have a fair amount of carbon deposits, sort of a dark brown color, but without ash or scaling. Typically a good plug will have some light brown coloring on the electrodes. An engine that's running lean or burning coolant will have uh, white or blistered electrodes. A wet file plug with a lot of black scaling or oily residue on the electrodes will indicate an oil burning condition. A carbon or dry file plug taken from an engine that's running rich will have excessive black carbon deposits. Generally, a rich fueling condition can be due to a number of things, including an incorrect fuel mixture, clogged air filter, uh, operating the engine at high elevation, uh, and cold temperature operation. Uh, now, my Ducati pretty much checks all those boxes because the bike was run for a year in the high Mojave Desert up in Joshua Tree. Thing is dirty. Uh, where the, you know, the air is real thin and, and full of just sand. Actually, like every like two to three weeks, I'd have to clean the uh, air filter. Also, when I lived in Boston, I'd ride the bike like well into the winter. Let's see how good my aim is. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! And uh, the coolant temperature wouldn't get in like much over 170 degrees F. So this plug falls somewhere in between a normal and carbon file condition and is what I would pretty much expect to see, especially after this many miles. And for those of you who have uh, L-Twin Panigales, it's probably a good idea uh, to change your plugs at the 15,000 mile service interval. And for good measure, I'm going to clean my MWR air filter before I put the fuel tank back on. Oh, look at the goodies coming off of this thing. Yeah, it's a lot of goodies. Let's actually gap it to see where it's at. All right, so if you pull up the old Ducati shop manual here for the Panigale, they call out 0.8 millimeters, plus or minus 0.1 millimeters. 0.8 millimeters is about uh, 31 thou, uh, plus or minus 0.1 millimeters, which is about 4 thou. Uh, it's actually 0 0.003937 inches, but um, that that leaves you a range of about uh, 28 to 35 thou. So I got my handy dandy plug gauge here. So there are two types of gapping tools. You've got a continuous gapping tool that has this tapered thickness around the circumference with indications, and then you've got this fixed gauge with these incremental sizes here. So the Panigale plugs have uh, two outer electrodes with a center electrode. All right, so you place it between the center and outer electrode. Start at the thinnest spot. And we just rotate the dial here until we find our thickness. And so we are at 38 thousandths. It's actually closer to 40. Now the spec is 28 thou to 35 thou. So we're over about 5 thou on this plug. So again, we'll do the other side here, starting at the thinnest spot, working our way around the circumference. So we're at about 38 thou. So we're a little over on that one, not too bad. So if it was, if it was gapped nominally, it looks like it opened up about six, six or seven thou. Let's go to the new plug and check the gap. So we want to be at 31 thou, that's the mean. And we're at about 33 thou. That's not bad, I'll probably just leave that one as is. The other side is. So you're just applying light pressure. Just, you just turn the wheel until it stops and you don't force it. So we're at about 30. So I'm gonna say that plug is, that plug is good to go. So plus or minus a couple of thou is as good as you're gonna get with, uh, with these tools. So this plug is good and we'll just install it. So in order to get to the horizontal or front cylinder and access the spark plug, uh, you have to remove uh, the front radiators which is a real pain in the ass. So, uh, you know, if you, if you take your radiators off, it's always a good idea just to check your plug in and replace it if it needs to be done. 
So in order to get access to the uh, vertical cylinder plug, you just need to take off your gas tank and uh, your seat. You should be able to get to it without any issue. When you go to buy one of these plugs, they're actually just NGK plugs. Ducati puts them in their own boxes and charges you like 54 bucks. The lady that works the parts counter at uh, Pro Italia uh, here in LA was nice enough to uh, give me the uh, NGK plug in the NGK box and only charge me 14 bucks. You can probably find it cheaper if you go to like an auto parts store or Amazon or Walmart or whatever. But uh, just an FYI. All right, so we're going to install our plug now. And if you don't have the special spark plug socket, what you can do is just take a couple pieces of duct tape and wrap it around the inside and the outside of the socket in a couple spots. And that'll grab the hex on the spark plug and it won't fall out. So you can slip it down the bore here. Oh, can we? And we can just rip the outer pieces off so it fits down the hole. There we go. Okay, here goes our spark plug. Plug is seated. Now we'll get our torque wrench. Workshop manual calls out about 12 newton meters. So that's, these plugs are pretty loose um, when I took them out, so that's probably about right. So to convert newton meters to foot pounds, all you really need to do is just multiply by 0.738 foot-pounds per newton meter so that's about nine nine and a half foot-pounds go all right so poor man's spark plug socket all right now we're going to remove our spark plug from the horizontal side and there's just enough clearance here between the front fender hugger to get your socket in here it's got to be gentle there when you put it in Three H drive is getting tired. Yeah, these are definitely not tight at all. This it feels like maybe four or five foot pounds. It's like nothing. Let's go plug. Dun, 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 dun. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. There it is. Oh, it looks about the same. A little brown. A little brownie. Oh yeah, well, that's pretty cooked there. Look at that. Look at the ceramic insulation there. What's going on, Durant? So to adjust your spark plug gap, you've got these little notched bits on your spark plug tool. And you just want to slip that notch over the outer electrode. All right, just find one. There, there are different uh, thicknesses. The tabs that are on here. All right. When we're prying, we want to make sure we're not up against the center electrode. Slip the gauge in and just pry downward or outward, you know, creating a moment at the base of this little cantilevered electrode. Now, when you're adjusting these little tabs here with your gauge tool, you want to be very gentle uh, when you're applying pressure, uh, when you're rotating the gauge. Generally, as a rule of thumb, I like to only use this gauge tool to loosen the gap or open the gap. Uh, to close the gap, generally what I do is I just tap the outer electrode on a flat surface. Just gently tap it. And that'll knock off a thaw or two. Alright, we've got our new plug here. And it's gapped and we're going to install it. Okay, let's see how this baby seats. Don't want to cross thread this thing and be porked. Mm, seems good. 12 newton meters. I can even get the head of this thing on here. All right. I collapse those shims. Come on, shims. There we go. Oh, yeah. Freaking Ducati porn right there. <laughs> 